I've talked to a couple of people who have said, it's so convenient just for me to stay home and get to watch all of this right here from home. And yeah. I don't have to get in my car and deal with traffic and walking and the parking garage and this and that. So I, I do hope that, um, you know, the best things that we can produce will still be live performances. But I, I think there's going to be an element of, of, of virtual presentations moving forward. I, of course, I agree with you. I think it's a new medium with a lot of, a lot of opportunity and, you know, it, I think any anybody who's stuck in a kind of either or mindset on this is looking at it the wrong way and I'm yeah. always here to help them think about how to look at that. It is a great tool that can do a lot of things for you, but I want to dive in. Maybe you guys could you, you guys were were doing free content, Vimeo, that kind of thing at one point in the pandemic and then you you made a pivot. Why don't you just walk us through the story of that and then we'll get into questions and we'll just branch off from there in the conversation. Well, I can start out, Jason, but I'm, I'm sure I'm going to need you to jump in quickly. Um, of course, initially, we didn't know how long this was going to go on. And if anyone had said, OK, you're going to be doing this for maybe two years, maybe we <laughs> would have all jumped ship. I don't know. Um, but without having that knowledge of how long this was going to go on, we thought our main objective was staying in contact with our patrons. And we did not want to lose our core audience. So that was really our primary objective. So initially we were staying in touch with people, like you said, we were having these weekly hump day ballets and they were just simply a straight screening of an archival footage of, of one of our you know, wide angle performances. It was nothing um, more elaborate than that, but people were enjoying that. And we started throwing in um, the dancers that were involved in the ballet, doing a little two minute introduction so that there was, it, it felt like there was some sort of live, component. Obviously it was not live, but it was, um, there was some immediacy there that, that, that our patrons could enjoy hearing from one of our dancers. And um, it, it's one of the things that we pride ourselves on at SMUN is that people get to know our company as individuals. And we talk about the SMUN family. And really it's the larger patron base that feels like we, they matter to us and they do. And they get it. They have a chance to get to know the dancers. The dancers come out to the lobby and they have these receptions after performances and they can actually speak to a dancer and they feel like they're meeting a rock star. So it's, it's, it's this engagement that, that is really, really immediate that they have. And so we didn't want to lose that facet of it, but then going on into this pandemic, we realized we needed to find a way to monetize it. So that was really the crux of the, of the situation. And that's when um, Jason and our managing director started to look for um, other ways that we could present our work and we would create new content, but we had to find a way to monetize it. Yeah. You know, it's that whole thing that I heard a lot at the beginning of this, which was engagement. And now when I hear people talk about engagement, I kind of feel like they're chickening out <laughs> in some way. If it never gets past the idea of engagement, there's more, there's plenty of engagement to be gained, but there's a lot more too. Jason, do you want to add anything to that and the decisions that we... Yeah, t walk us through it. I think, I think yeah. people who are listening in probably just want to hear a little bit of the just the backstory and the, the decision-making process that got you where you ended up and, and all about what happened then. Yeah, well, what Celia said, we had a bunch of archival material that we could present, um, but we did know that we needed something new. We needed something for our dancers to do. And uh, with our sprung floor, we were able to do a filming outdoors and um, in that way, we were then at that point, it was my job to find a way to get it to people without just giving it away. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's where Stellar came in. Uh, I researched uh, you know, a few different companies and with Stellar, uh, my tech technological abilities is not wonderful. So Stellar offered some great tech for not just me, but also customer support for our patrons. And just knowing that I wouldn't be the person that's getting called saying I can't get my computer working um, <laughs> was a huge factor in um, my decision making in this. So normally you guys do what about sixty performances a year? Is that right, or is it more than that? No, sixty to seventy. I mean, on a 70? on a busy year, uh, which is which is quite a few for a a, a company of sixteen dancers normally. Yeah. Um, and so what were your, when you started thinking about this and, and, you know, chose Stellar as a platform and everything, what was your idea about what you wanted to do in terms of content? Well, 
we had to determine how we were going to come back to work as a company because, you know, everyone started talking about pods and, and, and having smaller groups working together was, was safer. And so, uh, we had gone down to 14 dancers this year for, for budget reasons. And then we split, um, one of my guys is injured, but anyway, we split into smaller pods. And so what we did was we started creating mini programs for each of our three pods. So that right away gave us three programs that we could film and then edit and present. Mm -hmm. And then um, another thing that the dancers were very excited about was creating their own dance films. And so we were able to get them camera equipment and some of them are savvy with editing and um, they were very excited to have this opportunity to express themselves in a different way. And so because of our audience's uh, familiarity with our dancers as individuals, they were very excited to see what these people were gonna come up with. And so mm -hmm. the fourth program ended up being something that were the dancer films that they created themselves, our, our dancers. And so that ended up being our fall series that we could sort of sell as a package. Um, yeah, you guys created this all access pass that gave gave um, was it all mm -hmm. the all of them in one or was it just the because there was the Christmas the Christmas ballets and then there was the, the the fall ballets. How did the pricing and packaging work on that for you guys? So yeah, with the the fact that we were able to do three distinct performances opened up so many different possibilities for marketing. And that um, you know generally if someone were to go to the theater, they'd spend you know fifty sixty dollars a ticket for two people and to try to monetize that in one performance, one streaming, it didn't seem feasible, but by being able to put down four different distinct things, we can charge individual ticket prices or do a package price, which then more, you know, got the revenue up closer to what we would be in theater. Mm -hmm. So um, to answer your question, so for the fall dance series, we had four distinct performances. We, we broadcast them t two times each. Mm -hmm. So I would have someone sign up for like the Wednesday night series and then, uh, they would get all four Wednesday nights and get a Sunday series the same way. Um, then for Christmas, we were, because of uh, scheduling, we had a 15 performances, I believe. Mm. And uh, again, three different pods, so three different distinct performances. Um, but I wanted to give people flexibility. So what we did for that was, I, for the all access pass, I would give them a promo code that they could enter and then book their own tickets for, so they could see which performances they wanted. And how did people react to the packages versus the, did some people go for the single tickets and how did that break down? Were there more people interested in the package than the single tickets? Well, our subscribers are used to packages. So they, yeah. they threw in for the packages. Uh, we, you know, we had a price discount for packages. It was much less expensive to do it yeah. like that. So we had a bunch of people um, do that way. Of course, we have some donors that decided to, they, they'd buy each ticket individually and then make a donation on top of each ticket. You know, yeah, I was going to, I was going to stop on that point because we've seen this, we've seen other people do this very effectively, but, but perhaps nobody is a, uh, more effectively than you guys. So that, that leverage is really high with online events. In my opinion, the difference between just what you're buying with the ticket and then the, the added donation, walk us through how you guys thought about that and how you did it. Cause I thought it worked. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves, which you can feel free to share, but, this is really something people can use. Yeah, I, I'm very happy with how the donations have been going with the, with Stellar. Um, the we always when the subscriber subscribes, we ask if they would like to make their donation, and you know many of them do. And what's been great with Stellar is that you know usually with the subscribers we reach them once a year. That's the only transaction we have. But with each of these programs, we have they have been resubscribing to each pass and. They've been making donations every single time they interface with with Stellar. And in fact, with the all access pass, when I gave out the code that basically gave them comp tickets to choose which performances they want, they would still throw donations in on top of that right. every time they book an extra ticket. So yeah, the flexibility, um, it's not overbearing in terms of donations. It's just a quick screen that says, would you like to donate this amount? You can, and it defaults to no thanks. So you don't get those <laughs> problems of people like, I didn't mean like, to do that. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> no, I was going to suggest that we default it to a thousand dollars, but you guys yeah. are like, no, that's, <laughs> that's too much. How do my ticket go from, from 85 bucks to a thousand and eighty five? It's fine. Yeah. If you can make it happen, Jim. <laughs> 
<laughs> but so the, the the impact was pretty was pretty dramatic. I mean, so the let's see the fall series, which ran from November to early December. Uh, gosh, I mean, I'm looking at um, the tickets. Ticket revenue was thirty six thousand, uh, and then the the donations added on another seventeen. So that's almost a fifty percent increase in your your intake. Exactly. On the donations, which were totally just in line and a frictionless part of the experience. People, it, it, people have just really loved the Stellar platform. I mean, um, literally, I I just got a um, an email from a patron last week, and and his first sentence is, "I just wanted to say I am thrilled you found and are working with the Stellar website. They make ordering your tickets so easy to do." So, I mean, the feedback has been tremendous because as Jason mentioned, we have an older demographic. So we wondered about the learning curve of, of having to learn a new platform. You know, it was enough during the um, beginning of the pandemic to start teaching people how to use Zoom. Zoom, sure. Um, yeah. Our development director was doing one-on-one -on -one tutorials with many of our patrons. And um, so, so to get them to think? learn this new system with Stellar and, um, but you've continued to make tweaks that make it uh, the interface just really, really seamless, and and people have had no no trouble with it. And and if they do, uh, your your tech support is just right there. Your customer service is amazing, and Jason is also um, always available. And it, it so it's it's people are are they're 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 patient and they're willing to try something new because you know they care about it. But it's it's been a remarkable um, tool for us. Um, we didn't know how to budget for something like this. What what could we? What kind of revenue could we generate? And so, we had a very optimistic uh, goal. We thought if we can get a hundred people on each of our Wednesday series to to pay twenty five dollars, and and you know, so so we were just hoping that we could we could reach twenty thousand on our fall series. And you got to thirty six thousand. Yes, exactly, exactly, yeah. and then. Yeah. Um, Plus the plus the the donations. Plus the donations. Get the and and, and that yeah. was also not a heavy ask, as you mentioned. It's yeah. not a heavy ask. It's like, hey, would you like to help me out? And I think people know that we're just trying to survive, and that's that's really our goal: a, stay in touch with our core audience, you know, and b, just try to keep our whole team working and creating, so that when we are back in theaters, we can just ramp right up, and we're not then having to retrain an entire new team. That would just be impossible. Yeah. So, so this is really filling a gap immediately, and and then I mean, Jason, talk about Christmas. I mean, we just blew it out of the water. We we, we even had a we even had a <laughs> we even had a pool going inside the um, inside our office about okay, who was going to guess we were where we were going to end at? So um, who got it right? Who won? And what were the guesses? I'm dying to know. Okay, I'm glad, I'm glad you're not asking what the what the what the winner got. But anyway, um. <laughs> I do want to know that too. I'm sure everyone wants to know that. You know Break what? Down we, for us. we kept changing the goal because um, I was fairly conservative. Jason was even more conservative than I was. But but our managing was director was just like, no, no, push, push, push. And she was she was she was like, we're gonna. We thought, okay, if we see fifty, we'll be. Thrilled. Fifty thousand dollars. Fifty thousand dollars. Jason, what did you think it was going to be? What was your conservative guess? About fifty. 50 okay. You know, okay. I was, I'm looking at costs and everything, and yeah. checking the numbers and bit. Uh, as long as we hit fifty, we break even. We'll we'll be good to go. Yeah. And then just kept going and going. So and, and Celia, so, yeah, yours was a little higher, but I'm assuming kind of in the same ballpark, the same fifty ballpark. Well, I thought if we get fifty to sixty-five thousand, that would just be yeah. amazing. And then and then our managing director kept pushing, pushing, and she's like, no, six figures, six figures. So um, when we were approaching, oh, then we, our first internal um, pool was at which performance are we going to hit a hundred thousand? Cause we realized we were going to hit a hundred thousand. Okay. And so we said, okay, when are we going to do that? You and Jason so, were hanging your heads in shame by this point. <laughs> no, no, we had, we, no, we threw our hats up in the air. We were just like, no way we're all over that. Just a, a second of, of head hanging and then celebration. <laughs> okay. Yes, so, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so yeah. then, then it was, is it was how far beyond a hundred thousand are we going to yeah. get? So anyway, and you pretty exciting. Selling, over 3,200 tickets for that, the Christmas thing alone, which translated into $120,000 in revenue plus 
another 34,000 in donation revenue. So 155. So you guys missed by, by about 60, you know, you, you know, three X is <laughs> three times. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. That's great. That's great. I mean, and, um, I mean, the, the exciting thing about this is about online events is that once you get a little bit of marketing success and it gets rolling, you just, you just stand back and it just it works extremely well. Like, and that's not easy to do. So how did you guys, what do you attribute the success of that to, um, other than obviously awesome platform and great content? What, but from a marketing, um, from the point of view of a marketing plan or a project, like what, what was the foundation of that success? It's our patrons. I mean, they're just there. We have such loyal patrons. Our renewal subscriber base is always in the, you know, close to 90%. I mean, which is just amazing. So we just have this core group of audience that will follow us. They follow us when we're outdoors. We now know they follow us when we're online. Um, you know, in fact, this coming weekend, we're having our choreography showcase. And our goal for this week online is almost twice as much as we ever made in person for these performances. Wow. Yeah, so this has just been a huge marketing success and we know if we can continue with it in some way in the theaters, we will still be able to generate this revenue. Yeah, yeah our, our first um, our first time out with Stellar with our fall dance series, we primarily advertised just to our patron base with, with e-blasts and social media. And so mm -hmm. we do have a pretty de dedicated following. Um, did we do a postcard for that, Jason? No, we, we didn't, didn't even we didn't even do any out of home. We did not we, even do a postcard. We just we did, didn't even put a dollar into Facebook or anything. We, we just did eblast and just our internal posts with social media. Okay. So for Christmas, we did put some marketing funds behind it. We did do a postcard that went to all of our mailing um, our 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 base. And then we also did emails and then we we did some of our standard advertising that we would Which normally do for live performances. Yeah. What, um, what, what's the typical sort of advertising? Digital uh, advertising and also some television. We did a oh. little bit of, of, of um, cable, cable TV. So um, this is what we tried for Christmas and the reach was just incredible. And, and, and honestly, you know, never in, in, a, in the midst of a pandemic did I think I was gonna spend any of my energy or resources growing my audience. I mean, a, pandi a pandemic is just about survival. That's that's but, right. But Jim, I mean, we've yeah. grown our audience. We we had people tuning in for our Christmas ballet from Germany, from I England, just, from Ireland. I mean, it was so exciting. And I, I'm this so excited about that. That is yeah, great. This interactive platform, people feel, you know, it's one thing if you 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 sign up for something with an organization and they send you a link and you sit there at home by yourself and you're just t tuning it in. Maybe it's two in the morning, maybe it's eight in the morning over coffee or who knows when you're watching it. Right. But this fact that you actually tune in together at a certain time, there is still this community aspect to it, which is really what the theater is. It's 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 yeah. taking something in as a community, as a as a group, and 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 you feed off of each other. And so as as involved as you want to be, if you want to put chats in the chat box, you can do that. People now mm -hmm. are tuning in and saying, Hey, I'm tuning in from here, I'm tuning in from there, and they're putting in their chats in the chat box. We make it a requirement and our dancers are more than willing to do it. If it's their pod that's performing, they're also chatting. So, I mean, when can you actually go to a performance and talk right. to the dancers that are performing? Right. And so there's comments happening and then we, we stay online a little bit after the program ends and people are still making comments in the chat box. And then you can even have your reactions if you wanna get into the emojis and things like that. Or if you don't, turn it off, you have options. And so that aspect of that community um, feeling is is really been a huge a huge seller for me um, on Stellar. So kudos to to all of you with the with the platform and the and the and the tweaks you've made to to it. It's just really user friendly and 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 it, it it's just it's made it easy for us to still stay in touch with our audience. Th thank you so much. I mean, you know, the thing you said about building your audience during the pandemic, I, I but that that really means a lot to me because. You know, when we decided to build Stellar back in May, we didn't, you know, we didn't know much about what was going to happen or where it was going. But we really did build that. We, we decided to move forward with that project, which is now an entire company for 
the organizations that we work with, for the colleagues in the industry who, you know, need needed something for the pandemic. And as the end of the pandemic is now in sight, I am I'm just so thrilled the idea that people are getting that this is not a pandemic band aid. This is a new medium and it's a new opportunity that we've never had before and much need in this industry. And I have a question for you, which is, did you do any analysis on what percentage of the people at the Christmas show were not from your existing customer base? Did you do any, any analysis of that or had not been to an event before? No. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting we, to look at, right? Yeah. We haven't had a chance to look through all of that, but, but yeah. I, think, I think we will. Um, it is an interesting thing. And then just the other day, somebody saw our ad that we got from Gold Star and said, wow, I went to go check out your performance. Remember, Jason, that email that came in and somebody just said, you've got a new fan. This was great. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Well, and, you know, um, what I've heard is I've heard different stories about um, the impact of online events on, on fan base. And, and people have thrown some numbers around. I've heard numbers as high as 75% of people who were joining online events were new customers to, to a given organization, which is great. I mean, I don't think it's always that high, but if you think about that, right? Like if you... If you have a show with thousands of people watching, which you guys did, and all of a sudden you're just in, you're kind of like ingesting, you know, hundreds or thousands of new guys. It's a, it's a tremendous tool that allows you to escape the tyranny of, you know, physical, physical space, right? Like they don't have to be in, in the Bay Area to come see it. Exactly. And, and it's also great because we're always going to be able to present works because we're, we're establishing a library of things that we can also bring back by popular demand for those that might have missed last fall's performances. We could show that again when the dancers are, are on an off period because the dancers can't work 52 weeks out of the year. They need downtime to rest their bodies yeah. and what have you. But it still makes it possible for us to continue to um, present. That's so awesome. I just want to say, in case anyone has a question, put it in the chat which as Sally was just mentioning is an important part of the stellar experience. So if, if you have a question for Sally or Jason, just drop it in the chat. I should be able to see it and ask it on your behalf. So please do that. Um, yeah, this is just so exciting. I mean, I, when you guys contemplate, so when do you think just the question that I'm asking everybody that I talk to these days is when do you anticipate being, I know you don't know, you know, the law, the way the law is going to break down of the mandates, but when do you anticipate in-person events restarting for Smoon? Jason, you want to take that? Oh, sure. Yeah. So our 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 thoughts is we're going to do some more outdoor performances in the fall, um, again to film and put online with Stellar, and then in theater we are pushing for our Christmas ballet to be back in theater. So nice. End of November is is our goal. Nice. Very good. Very good. That, that's excellent. Um, you know, one of the things that's coming up as well as a topic more and more with me is people asking like, how do I how do I approach the idea of a hybrid event where it's in person and there are people in the theater and it's available as an online event? Is that something you guys have thought about yet? We've, we've thought about it and have not come up with a solution yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think it's, it's going to be a learning process for all of us. I, I, I will have some sh uh, thoughts to share with, with people as, as we get a little closer to that time on how to approach that. I think they're extremely viable. Um, you know, one of the wonderful things about, you know, a hybrid event is that 90% of the costs of an, an event, right, will, will be essentially funded by the in-person event. So the profitability of the, of the hybrid portion of that will be even, even better. So um, let's see. Um, somebody's asking if you have um, considered meet, or greet, meet and greet or other VIP options. Have you done any of that? People have done that. Have you guys done any of that? Other than just having the, the dancers available during, during the show and after the show. Um, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, after our fall performances, each one included a Zoom Q&A with the artistic department and the dancers. So every performance you could talk with them about what they were doing. Our development uh, team has also put a lot of pre-show uh, events. Uh, we have a local chocolate factory nearby and they organize a chocolate tasting before one of our events for nice. Valentine's. Day. So they shipped out the chocolates and then had the experts and there was a little Zoom call there to do that. So yeah, we're absolutely before and after performances trying nice. to get in touch with people. 
So here's, here's the question that I'm sure is on everyone's mind now. Do, do, can you smell the chocolate factory from, from where you are normally? <laughs> <laughs> and also, do they bring you chocolates on a regular basis just to be good neighbors? Well, well that, was, that was the impetus for us getting together with them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? I can see that. I can see that. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, we're coming to the end of our time. I just want to say how much, uh, how much fun I've had talking to you guys. I love hearing um, how, how you've put the platform to use and how I, I'm so... Uh, thrilled and gratified that it's had um, all the, all that you know different kinds of value to you. So th just thanks for that, and thanks for being with us today. Thank you for having us, Jim. Yeah. It's, it's, it's great, and we're we're glad that we could uh, share some of this uh, with people looking for uh, a platform. Um, we've we're just so thrilled that we have found a way to stay in contact with our patrons. Um, it's it's not only for our patrons, but for us. I mean, our dancers are so excited to know that people are still watching them perform and they're missing us. Um, and it's it's just been uh, really an incredible solution for us. Well, I'm very I'm very uh, bullish on the idea of Smoo and having a worldwide audience. I really am because, you know, and I think about this a lot, right? One of the things that online events is, let, let's, let's just say somewhere in the world, and maybe it's you guys, there is the greatest small dance company in the world, right? Like that's, somebody is that and maybe it's you, right? Don't you think the greatest small dance company in the world deserves a big audience? I happen to think it does. It deserves a very large audience all over the world. And uh, so I don't know, I think that's phase two for you guys is uh, obviously continue to just nail it for your existing audience and then grow it by a thousand times. That's that's what I want for you guys. That would be great. It's been a while since we toured to Italy. We've been twice, um, and we've done touring domestically. But uh, we'd be up for that. We'd be up well, for that. <laughs> and you can do it through online events too. That's that's the other, that's the other yes. thing we're saying, right? Yeah, that, that's exactly. Absolutely right. Um, well, thank you guys so much. It's been a lot of fun. Is there anything you'd like to just offer the people that are, are tuning in? Obviously, our our colleagues in the live entertainment industry. Any sort of final thoughts for them about? what they should be thinking about when it comes to online events and how to make them work for you? Uh, my thing would just be, don't be scared. Just, just do it. Um, as I mentioned, Stellar's tech support, specifically Richard has been fantastic. I couldn't have done any of this without him. He's sitting right um, there. <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> but yeah, he, I mean, he was just so hands-on. He was there anytime I needed him and it was a huge support and yeah, just give it a try. Awesome. Well, Salia Fushil, uh, Jason Aaron, thank you for joining us from the Smoon Contemporary Dance Theater. We love you guys. Uh, have enjoyed working with you for these 18 years. Oh my gosh. But and, and hopefully a, a lot more. That'll be, it's something to look forward to online and in person. So Terrific. thank you again.